So let's say you're preparing to make an animation to show in your demo reel. Something awesome and captivating and funny and colorful. You open up Flash and prepare your scene. Now you know it's going to go to DVD, so you set the work area to 720 pixels by 480 pixels because that's the NTSC standard. So you begin animating away, and after a few hours you've got something that looks awesome. You're happy with how it looks, so you export it and edit it together with the rest of your demo reel content. Once you've finished editing, you slap the project into an authoring program like iDVD, Windows DVD Maker, or Adobe Encore. Then you set up your menu and burn to disk. Great. You slide your demo reel into your DVD player, you wait for it to load, and then you cringe with disgust. Everything on your demo reel is squashed and looks terrible. But how could this be, you ask, confused because you kept to the DVD standards? Well, this brings us to why. The video you see on your TV is warped because of a difference of pixel aspect ratios between computers and televisions. A pixel aspect ratio, or PAR, is simply the ratio of a pixel's width to its height. For example, a pixel aspect ratio of 1 means that each pixel's width is the same as its height. A pixel aspect ratio of 2 means that each pixel is two times as wide as it is tall. And a pixel aspect ratio of 0.5 means that each pixel is half as wide as its height. So let's take a look at a few more numbers. The NTSC standard has three major formats. There's NTSC D1, which is used for broadcast, NTSC DV, which is used for DVD, and NTSC widescreen, which is used for widescreen formatted DVDs. The NTSC D1 format uses a resolution of 720 by 486 pixels with a PAR of 0.9. NTSC DV runs at 720 by 480 with a PAR of 0.9 as well. Now NTSC widescreen runs at 720 by 480 with a PAR of 1.21. And you'll notice that between the DV and the widescreen, they use the same resolution but a different pixel aspect ratio. Now the PAL standard has two major formats, those being PAL D1 and DV and PAL widescreen. And there is no distinction between PAL D1 and DV with regard to resolution, and both run at 720 by 576 with a PAR of 1.07. PAL widescreen runs at 720 by 576 with a PAR of 1.42. And similarly with NTSC, the PAL resolutions stay the same, but the pixel aspect ratio changes. Still with me? There's one more term to cover, and that's display aspect ratio, or DAR. Now don't confuse us with the pixel aspect ratio, because where the pixel aspect ratio describes each pixel, the display aspect ratio describes the overall image. We use this as another means to differentiate and compare formats. NTSC and PAL both have full frame formats and widescreen formats. Full frame formats use a display aspect ratio of 4 to 3, meaning the final image after pixel aspect ratio consideration, has a width that is one and one third larger than its height. Four to three simplifies to 1.3 repeated. Widescreen formats have a DAR display aspect ratio of 16 to nine, or 1.7 repeated. And NTSC has an oddball DV format with a DAR of 27 to 20, or 1.35 which is slightly wider by comparison to the D1 format. So why did the animation made in Flash at 720x480 appear squished when viewed on a DVD? Well, Flash is a program that doesn't work well with non-square pixels and offers no feature to preview content with a PAR that is any different than 1. This means that a 720x480 animation in Flash has a PAR of 1, which calculates to a DAR of 1.5. Now remember that full frame has a DAR of 1.3 repeated, so that means that the animation would have to either be squished horizontally into a 4 to 3 box, or you're going to have to sacrifice 36 pixels from both the left and right side of the animation. 
that means a 10% loss of your hard work that won't ever be seen. How do we fix this? Well, the first thing to decide before you start creating your content is what format will it be output to. If you know it will eventually make it to a physical medium like a DVD, then plan around a DVD format. If you're only going to publish to the web, then make sure the final output will conform to whatever online media player will play your content. And take note that YouTube will re-encode your uploaded videos and conform them to a standard 4 to 3 or 16 to 9 format with square pixels. Once you know what your final output will be, plan your content around the corresponding format specifications. When creating content, you'll have to check with your software to see how they handle different pixel aspect ratios. For example, applications like Adobe's Photoshop and After Effects can both handle PARs of a large variety. So if you're making a graphic or modifying an image in Photoshop that will be used for DVD content, set up your document at 720 by 480 with a PAR of 0.9 right inside of the program right when you set up your document. And then whether you choose to work with the pixel aspect ratio correction preview on or off is entirely up to you. The same goes for After Effects. If you're working with a program that doesn't offer differing PARs, then you need to finagle the resolutions a little bit. This is easiest done by multiplying the final output width by the pixel aspect ratio. So for example, if you're going to be outputting to DVD using NTSC DV, which is 720 by 480, then you would multiply 720, which is the width, by the par, which is 0.9 for NTSC. And you would get 648 by 480 as your working resolution. This ensures a seamless conversion come time to author your content. Now if you're outputting to DVD using PAL DV, which is 720 by 576, then you would get 771 by 576. Remember that PAL pixel aspect ratio is 1.07. Dividing the final output height by the PAR is also another method, but will require you to later resize your content by the percentage of your PAR multiplied by 100. So, for example, NTSC with a PAR of 0.9 will result in having to scale to 90%. A PAR of 1.07 will result in 107%, etc. So be sure to make it clear to yourself what the final output will be so that you can be certain your creations won't be squished or squashed without you telling them to be.